Is it true? He said. They're saying all that down the train that Harry Potter's in this compartment. So it's you, is it? Yes, said Harry. He was looking at the other boys. Both of them were thickest and looked extremely mean. Standing either side of the pale boy, they looked like bodyguards. Oh, this is Crab, and this is Goyle, said the pale boy carelessly, noticing when Harry was looking. And my name's Malfoy. Draco Malfoy. He starts off as the ultimate sort of slimy head git, if you will, and he slowly, very slowly, matures to the sixth film where he realises that he, you know, he wants more than just a sort of two-dimensional uh, relationship with Harry. He wants to get involved, so to speak. Enjoy the ride back to London. I think it's been quite frustrating for Tom. Take your hands off me, you filthy squib! In the fifth and the fourth and the third films, because Tom had so much more to give. I don't want your help. Don't you see that I have to do this? I have to. I was so glad when I read the script that he had such a big role. I'm back. It's like seeing a new character. <laughs> because Malfoy becomes so much more complex, conflicted. You see him struggle with his own identity and the task that Voldemort's given him. The thought of someone seeing him this week is like, I mean, I, that's the moment we should explore. Sure. As well as the emotion of All right, well, we'll if we play around with it and you, uh, yeah. yeah we'll Give us a thumbs up when it's yeah. a good one. All right, mate. David and I have had great fun sort of talking about where he is in each individual scene in mind state and what's he thinking and it certainly gives you a lot more things to play with, really. The thing that Dumbledore's death did was to steal Harry and to really focus him on the task ahead because before he was the foot soldier who was under orders and now it was different. Now he was the one who was having to make the plans. <laughs>